Link wants to get top grades in school, so he commits to building a habit of studying. And boy, is he motivated and ready to go hard. He starts grinding 8, 9, sometimes 10 hours a day. But a few days in, Link's motivation starts to slip. So he tries using a reward system, an episode of anime after every successful study session, or squatting up with boys for every completed assignment. But no matter how many tricks and hacks he tries, he still can't build the habit of studying consistently. And before you know it, he's gone a whole week without opening a single book. Habit quest failed. So where did Link go wrong? It wasn't that he lost motivation. It wasn't that he didn't try hard enough. The problem was his goal. Link was focused on getting top grades. He was chasing an outcome. Outcomes are usually not under our control. You could be doing all the right things, but if the weather was off or if your friends persuade you to play one more game, then you're finished. A better approach would be to dig deeper and figure out what kind of person is able to get top grades. What does this character do? What decisions does this character make? These calls identity-based habits. These are habits not based on reaching an outcome, but instead around building a character. The goal is not to get top grades. The goal is to become a person who studies every day. If we look at any story or video game, there's always an overarching quest. In Star Wars, Rey's quest is to save the galaxy from the evil Sith. Harry Potter's quest is to save the world from this guy. Sure, they each have a quest, but that quest doesn't decide whether or not they'll succeed. What's important is their transformation, their identity change. Rey becomes a Jedi, Harry becomes a wizard, and this new identity is the key to success. Think about it like this. Our motivation lies on a spectrum. One end of the spectrum depends on external factors, getting rewards like good grades, or avoiding punishments like disappointing your Asian parents. The other end of the spectrum depends on internal factors like your values. You do it because it's who you are. It's your identity. We want to move away from outcomes and towards identity on this spectrum, but all of this is still considered considered extrinsic motivation. The motivation comes from outside the habit itself. Remove that motivation and you no longer want to do the habit. The ultimate form is intrinsic motivation, where you're driven by the pure joy or love for the habit itself. If you actually love to study, you're able to tap into limitless motivation and you'll become unstoppable. But let's be real, if you're struggling to build a habit of studying every day, then chances are you probably don't love studying all that much. Most people don't, but that doesn't doesn't mean that you can't be open to the idea. When we build identity-based habits, those habits become part of our self-image. So if I pride myself on being a good student, even if I'm not a good student yet, then I'm more likely to choose the behaviors that align with being a good student. Every time I choose to act like a good student, like I go to class instead of sleeping in, or I put my phone away when I study, or I exercise to keep my brain sharp, those decisions reinforce my identity that I'm a good student. And over time, all these small small wins start to add up. I start to study more regularly, get better grades. I start to build up all this evidence that says, hey, maybe I am a good student after all. And this transformation moves me up the spectrum to the point where I actually start to enjoy the habit of studying. It becomes fun. And you know what they always say, you can't outcompete someone who's just having fun. But your character transformation can also happen in the reverse. When you keep telling yourself things like, I'm not a morning person, or I'm bad at math. When you constantly repeat this story to yourself, you start to believe it, even if it's not true. And over time, you'll subconsciously do things to avoid becoming a morning person or avoid studying math. So I had a high school teacher repeatedly tell me that I was a failure and that I would amount to nothing. And for a long time, I internalized that. It affected how I saw myself and I subconsciously acted in ways that would reinforce that identity. It took me years to reverse the cycle and climb out of that hole of self-defeat. Now I know that if I someday become a parent, how important it is to watch the narratives that I feed my kids. So the first step in building habits that last is not choosing an outcome to get, but choosing a character to become. The goal is not to get a million subscribers on YouTube. The goal is to become a character who consistently makes awesome videos that people want to watch. The goal is not to make a million dollars. The goal is to become a character who constantly builds products that solves people's problems. The goal is not to get straight A's. The goal is to become a character who studies a little bit every day. Don't even worry about the outcomes. Focus on the transformation. Because frankly, you're not gonna see outcomes right away. Like if you've never gotten straight A's in your entire life, then you're not all of a sudden gonna get straight A's tomorrow. But don't even worry about it, okay? Focus 
Focus on what you can control. Make the right decisions every day, and over time, your habits will compound and transform your identity. Now, if you don't know what character you're trying to become, here's an exercise we can do to figure that out. If you've been following this channel for a while, you might be familiar with the Feynman technique. You can check out this video here for a detailed walkthrough on how to use the Feynman technique to improve your grades. We can also use it to build our habits. The Feynman technique will help you discover the character you wish to become based on the habits you're currently thinking about. The way it works is by asking the most important question. Why? Why do you want to build a habit of studying? Because I want to get top grades. Why do you want to get top grades? Because I want a strong resume. Why do you want a strong resume? Because I want to get into medical school and become a doctor. Why do you want to become a doctor? Now, when you start getting into these more broad life questions, you start to see extrinsic motivation creeping into your story. If you want to become a doctor because your parents told you to, or because you want to be rich or have the prestige, then that's chasing an outcome. On the other hand, if you want to become a doctor because you're genuinely curious about how the body works, or you enjoy learning, researching, and teaching about health, then you're more likely to build habits around it that stick. So now I want you to take out a piece of paper or open a notes app on your phone and write down your own answer. We'll also build a free habit quest template eventually and put it in the description when it's ready, but take some time to try this exercise because once you've found your deepest why, you can extrapolate better habits for your character and begin to build your habit systems. Take your time with this one. I've had a lot of students tell me that this single exercise has changed their life or at least revealed to them what has been missing. After you're done, put your answers in the comments below. I'd love to read them and get to know you a little bit better.